Hi everybody! In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a very small bullet hell game. The goal of this tutorial is not to show you everything you can do with the Shmup Creator, but rather to demonstrate how you can create a game very quickly with this tool. So let's get started! First we're going to create a new game. To do this, click on the Load or Create a Game button, then click on the Plus button. Type a name which will be the name of your game directory. Let's type Bullet Hell Light, then press Enter. We will use an asset package for this game. Assets packages contain game ready elements like backgrounds, enemies, sounds, or bullets, and so on. Click on Existing Package, then choose 2D Geometry Assets and click OK. A new window opens asking us what orientation we would like for our game. This setting will set the scrolling direction as well as the default orientation of objects in this level. Today we want to make a vertical game, so click on Vertical, then OK. By the way, you can change this setting later if you want. Our game is now on the Games list, so click on Load to load it. We are now in the Level Manager, which lists all the levels of our game, and you can see that our game has no level yet. Click on Plus to add a new level, and for the name of our level, type Level 01. Then click on Load. By default, new games use the whole screen, but a vertical ratio is more appropriate for a bullet hell game. So click on Game Editor button. The Game Editor is where you can find all global features related to your game. For instance, if you change the game screen ratio, this property will be the same for all levels. In this menu you can also find explosions, particle elements, modify the HUD or the start menu, and also adjust the gameplay settings and scoring system. To click on the Settings tab and choose 3 to 4 in the Game Screen Ratio section. To close this section, click once again on the Game Editor button. To navigate in the level, you can choose the scroll bar at the bottom of the screen or the mouse wheel to go forward or backward on the camera path. If you don't like the space background of the level and would like something more consistent with the geometry asset, click on the Level Preferences button. Then click on the first tab, Settings. In this section you can choose looping backgrounds for your level. We will choose BG Grid Big B for our scroll layer 1 and BG Grid B for the scroll layer 2. This is a quick and easy way to create parallax scrolling. You can choose as many as 5 different pictures for your level background and modify their individual scrolling speeds. The pictures are stacked on top of one another and if a picture has transparency, it will show the pictures below through any transparent areas. Next we will change the look of the player and use the player asset from the asset pack. In the settings tab, click on the choose button to open the player box, then choose the second player. Click on OK to close this menu. It, now it's time to test our level. There are several ways to do it. You can press the spacebar to start the level, then press the spacebar again to stop it. You can also click on the play button on the top right of the screen. In both cases you can play your game directly in the level editor and you'll still be able to see all editor icons and tools. You can also press tab to start the game, then tab again to stop it. Or press the start button on your gamepad to do the same thing. In those cases the editor itself and all the tools are hidden and you can play your game the same as players will. It's quick and easy to test your game and experiment. Don't hesitate to try things out as much as you like. The ability to test gameplay and level design at any time with the press of a button is what makes the Shmup Creator so nice. If you think, for example, that the player moves a little too slowly, you can change this in the Settings tab. Find Speed in the Move section, change Speed from 60 to 70. What is a shoot em up without an enemy? No fun. Let's now add a simple enemy. Move the mouse to the left until the game box opens, then in the Enemies tab click on the big yellow rectangle enemy. 
Click again to place it in the level. This enemy is not very threatening, so let's give this guy a weapon. Click on the Weapons tab, then click on Weapons Editor to open it. There are a lot of things in the Weapons Editor and I'm not going to explain everything in this video. Let me just explain quickly what a weapon set is. A weapon set is a collection of one or several weapons. A player or an enemy can have several weapon sets, which can themselves contain different weapons. It allows you to change the current weapons of the player or of an enemy. During the game, with power-ups, or as we'll see shortly, with waypoints. In the Weapons Editor, we can see that this enemy has one weapon set, called Set 1, and one empty weapon locator represented by the grey arrow on the enemy. We'll choose a weapon from the Asset Pack. Click on the Choose button to open the Weapons Manager, then choose EL Basic and click Select. Now the enemy is threatening, but a little too much. The weapon is shooting too fast. In the Burst tab, change the time between burst to 1. The weapon will now shoot one bullet every second. Click OK to close the editor. Now move the weapon locator to the left side of the enemy, then with the Shift button pressed, we can duplicate the weapon by dragging it to the right of the enemy. We also want to spawn items when the enemy dies to reward the player. In the Gameplay tab, choose Item Star for the item, and we will spawn four items in a radius of nine. Let's quickly test the level. That's much better. We will duplicate this enemy three times, press Shift, drag it to the right. Select the two enemies, press Shift and drag them a little above. Press Tab to test again. The level is starting to look a bit like a game. Let's scroll a little bit forward to find an empty place. We'll add another enemy. Open the game box, click on the boss square blue and place it on the screen. We want this enemy to come from the top of the screen. Wait a few seconds while shooting in the player's direction, then leave in the same way. To make the enemies move, we can use waypoints. Waypoints are a collection of points forming a path. We can use the Create Waypoints tool to draw a path manually, but because I'm lazy, I'll simply use a Waypoint Path preset. Click on the Choose button to open the Path Presets Manager. You can see the animated previews of the different presets in this manager. Choose Forward, Wait, Backward, then click. Press Tab again to test the game. You'll notice that the enemy is not staying on the screen and is moving down with the camera, and I want it to go up from the top, stay at the same position on the screen, then go up. In the Wave tab, there is an Attach to Camera checkbox. Click on it. What this does, as soon as the enemy is seen by the camera, it will attach itself to the camera and move with it. I'll go to the Perspective Camera to better show you what happens. This is with the Attach to Camera disabled. Now with Attach to Camera enabled. Can you see the difference? The enemy and its path are now moving with the camera and the result is that the enemy stays in the same position on the screen. Now I will choose a weapon for this enemy. Same as before, we'll open the Weapons Editor, then open the Weapons Manager and choose three ways. I don't want the enemy to shoot until it arrives at its waiting position and stops moving. We can set properties at each waypoint and decide when an enemy can use its weapons or not, among other things. You can click on a waypoint or use the small arrow button to select the first waypoint, then click on Change Weapon Set and choose None, then select the second waypoint, click on Change Weapon Set and choose Set 1. In this scenario, the enemy will not be able to start shooting 
until it arrives at the second waypoint. Let's test the game. As before, we will add items to this enemy. By the way, if we wish to modify the settings of an item, we need to open the game box and add the items to the level. The reason we need to do this is that we can't modify objects directly in the game box. We can only edit things in the level itself. Now we have access to its properties, I'm going to change the score value of the star to 100. We can then delete the item. And there it goes. We will duplicate the enemy, shift and drag, and drag again. And then we can test the game. I'll add a last enemy to show you that we can spawn several enemies with only one wave. Let's add small squares 0, 3, red enemy. Then we'll add a waypoint to make the enemy move to the bottom of the screen. Click Attach to Camera to make this enemy move with the camera. In the Wave tab, we can choose Random for the spawn type. You can see a rectangle showing where the enemies will be spawned. We want the enemies to spawn on a horizontal line, so let's choose 65 for the width and 10 for the plane height. We also want the enemies to orient their path in the player's direction, so choose to the player for the orientation. We want to spawn 16 enemies, so type 16 in the number of spawns edit box. And we want a timing of 0.1 seconds between each enemy. Type 0.1 for the spawn interval. Don't forget to add items for rewarding the player. Click on Each Spawned Enemy Spawns Items because we want each spawned enemy to leave an item individually when we kill them. Press Tab to test the game. We created three different enemies and now we can use them to populate our level. You can duplicate them using shift and drag as we did before. Or select one or several of them and press Ctrl and C to copy them. Then go somewhere else to paste them with Ctrl and V. Let's duplicate our enemies a few times. For this kind of game, timing is really important. The apparition of enemies and bullets should be like music. In the shmup creator, almost everything is activated by the camera. Objects are sleeping, and as soon as the camera sees them, they wake up and start doing things. We can check the timing with the camera perspective mode. To modify the timing of the level, one thing you can do is change the camera scrolling speed. Click on the camera button to select it, and change the speed from 1 to 1.4. The scrolling will be faster and the time between two enemy activations will be shorter, resulting in a more difficult and dynamic game. You can also move the enemies a little bit below to make them activate sooner or a little bit above to make them activate later. After each modification, don't hesitate to test your level until you're happy. A level will go on forever until an end of level object is activated, so don't forget to always add one to your levels. Let's do that now. Open the game box and go to the Gameplay tab and click on the End of Level object. We will place it just above the last enemies. As soon as the camera sees it, the End of Level object will activate, stop the game and display the Level Complete text or the congratulations text if the level is the last one. Let's test the game.
Our level is ready. We can now build our game and export it as an executable standalone. Open the game editor and click on Build the Game button. After a short moment, the Shmup Creator builds our standalone game. We can reveal it in Explorer with this button or start and play our game with this other button. We have made a really short game, but it's really easy and fast to add more enemies and more waves and create longer levels using the same principles. There are also a ton of other features and things that you can do with the Shmup Creator, and we've only scratched the surface in this video. Feel free to explore, and above all, have fun.